tyranny. Violence. Europe was engulfed in war, plague, and famine. Gang? I need your help. Catherine is the last chance to help this kingdom. Her uncle is the king of France. You must unite Europe. Kidnapping her is the only way. We don't kidnap women. The king's rules are God's rules. Go. I need you alive. Yeah, we'll be close. I need to find her. I know who did it. And those soldiers are never gonna find him. Why? Because I trained him. Tomorrow, she will be yours. You must protect her. I will do whatever it takes. I will burn every tree in the forest. He cannot be allowed to get Catherine. If you choose to fight, you may die. But for your cause, and that is a good death! Who's gonna... Kings may be chosen by God, but they still make the mistakes of men. Uh, hello, I'm Peter Yakel, and you listening Monday Morning Critic. Um, ahoy, yakshir mate, uh, Pritawa. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah, 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 dobře. And you? you know, yeah, dobře. And I have to say, <laughs> Peter, I have to say that I can't. I, I was le- looking up how to say that I can speak Polish fluently, and it's amazing how close these some of these words are. Absolutely, they are, you know, and I, I understand Polish, I cannot speak too much, but, but if I'm there, I could, you know, just like I was at the European Championships in Judo in Poland, you know, and I was speaking fluently, kind of, like, I thought, like, I was speaking fluently, but I was not, but it's, <laughs> it's very similar, I, yeah, we understand each, each other a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's amazing, because um, I, I could not, all the all the movie stuff aside, I could not get over um, your judo background. You were a serious judo competitor. Yeah, I, I did my I, my first life was judo. So I'm, uh, up to 27, uh, I was living my first life, and that ended up with Olympic Games uh, in uh, 2000. Yeah, and then in Sydney, and uh, I got injured before, uh, and I, I had to stop doing judo after the Sydney Olympic Games. And I started uh, to do film, and that's my second life, you know. And it goes from 2000 till now. It's it's already been 22 years, which is absolutely insane how wow. it's running. Wow. How, yeah. how, how proficient are you in judo? Like right now, like say if I said, you know, if you had to do some training or how proficient do you think you are? Uh, I think like, you know, uh, in judo, you have to practice. And it's, yeah. it's about practicing and, and uh, you know, doing it every day. But uh, seven years ago, I went to, uh, you know, uh, kimono, uh, judo, yeah, how do you say it in, in, in English? Like, you know, the, uh, like uh, the... A- MMA? Dress. Yeah, the, no, I mean, the dress for judo is kimono. kimono oh, kimono, 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 yeah, yeah, kimono. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and I was fighting a training with a, uh, you know, gold medalist in judo, which is my, my uh, you know, same weight. Same height, uh, Lukáš Kerpalek, and uh, it was good. You know, I could, you know, just like I, I just like it was a good fight, and yeah. I was super surprised that I still can do it. But uh, my back hurts, you know, so it's it's very hard for me to to do it on daily basis, and uh, so I don't do it, you know, and I just work out, and you know, I'm I'm dreaming about fighting, 
And that's yeah, it. yeah. And you're you're a really tall guy too, right? You're like six. You're pretty tall. I'm six seven. I'm six seven. Wow. I'm wow. Tall. Yeah. Um. You know, it's amazing because I'm looking at your filmography, right? Triple X, uh, Alien versus Predator, some really great movies. Uh, Euro Trip. Um, you know, wh why the, why the jump from acting to producing and directing, right? Because you had a pretty good little acting career going on before you decided to, you know, devote more of your time to producing and directing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I was like, when I was doing judo, I was also a stuntman and I was at big productions like uh, Jean of Arc, which was, um, you know, uh, uh, directed by Luc Besson, uh, starring Mila Jovovich, And I was three, uh, three months there. You know, so I was, I was, they, they chose me for some other parts later on. And, and then I got the chance, you know, to be in these big movies. And I thought it's a dream to be in a movie with Anthony Hopkins, you know, and, and others, you know, Sam Jackson. And I, uh, I was invited to U.S. And I was there basically uh, in uh, around 2002 and 2003 when these premier, you know, big movies had premieres. And then I got some offers there, but I I cannot live in in LA because I love Czech Republic, and I I just like I have my family here, I've got my friends, mm. so I had to come back. And I uh, because my father has a production company here, I started to produce movies with him, and then I started to write scripts. And uh, when we were trying to find a director. In 2010, for my first movie, which I directed, uh, Kainek, which is about the most famous Czech prisoner who escaped from a prison like Alcatraz, mm. uh, they told me, like, you know, you should do it, you know, because you you know uh, you have you have a vision, which is the most important for that. You can explain it to people, so do it. So I did it, and because they told me, like, you know, it's got uh, it could have maximum 250 thousand viewers in our country for this. The thriller genre and we had three times more like you know wow. close to 100,000 wow. so it was a big success and I feel like you know I just started to continue in doing it and then I, I, I again uh, wrote directed and produced a movie horror movie Ghoul which I shot in Ukraine yeah. uh, which was out footage and it was again like uh, highest grossing horror ever shown in the Czech Republic and that's why I just uh, was able to do medieval. So it's it was it was great, and I super enjoyed working on you know all three these movies. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, and you mentioned um, the messenger, the story of Joan of Arc. That is one of the most underrated movies ever made. Like it is so powerful. It is so good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just like sometimes it, it happens. <laughs> sometimes these great movies, like, I don't know if they fall through the cracks. And it's like, when I first saw that movie at the theater, I was like, this is going to be a, an all-time great. Like, it was so good. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's just like sometimes. And, you know, some movies are not for everybody. And what you yeah. see is just like, you know, uh, average. You know, what is like basically... Uh, Somebody loves it, somebody hates it, you know, and you just see the average points. But it's not always about it, you know. I love if people uh, love movies and some people really hate the same movies. So yeah. it's just like yeah. these ends, you know. You don't want to be in the... I don't want to be in the middle that people say, okay, I want to say, oh my God, it was... It touched me so much, you know, that I felt for them and I, I, I you know, understand what you wanted to say with that. Or somebody says, "Okay, it's a crap." You know, it's just like I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't just like I, don't, I don't like it, and that's fine because it's always like you know. Uh, so it's I, I rather focus uh, the movie for some group of people who would really love it than to do it, you know, like more average for everybody. Yeah, to so try to make everyone happy, you make nobody happy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. You know, uh, and I have to say, from Medieval, I absolutely what a great movie, and I and I'm dying to talk to you about this. You know, I went to the theater. It was only in the theater for two weeks, and I don't get how that works either because Medieval. I've seen everything that's in the theater now. Medieval is as good as any of them, and, and it's weird how they they leave something in the theater, they pull it out, they leave movies in the theater that are just unwatchable. I, I don't get how that works, Peter. That would drive me nuts as a director and a producer. That would drive me bananas. This is really difficult, uh, yeah, and I, like, you know, sometimes it's like that, 
you need a lot of money uh, to promote it in US to get it to everybody to go to theaters and you know I did this in the Czech Republic and we 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 get we are five weeks in a row number one year wow wow which is great yeah we get over 300,000 viewers now and uh, in the US I was just watching what is happening, you know, how it went into theaters. And I, I just like, you know, uh, I couldn't spend this, that kind of money they suggested for this kind of movie. So I was just like waiting what's going to happen, you know, and it's, it's hard, you know, sometimes it's difficult to see that, uh, you know, uh, your movie is there just for two weeks or three weeks and it's, it doesn't have enough theaters uh, and not, no promotion. So it's it's tough, of course, because I've spent a lot a, a lot of time on it. Yeah, and it shows because movies like Medieval, like you see, like Braveheart and, and um, all these movies. I feel like it's a genre gone by, right? Like um, they don't make a lot of these great movies anymore. Um, Kingdom of Heaven is another one I'm thinking of. Like there's these they're great movies. These these epic. It, it's like it's a rare movie, and it's so good. I don't know why they would even. I don't know. I, I, I hope people get out and see this. This is such a great movie. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's, you know, I always wanted to do a movie like Braveheart or The, the Gladiator. And, uh, yeah, so I, I just, like, I was, when I was writing it, I was thinking what I would like to watch. And that's always, like, because I do all the movies for myself. Yeah. I have to be satisfied. Otherwise, yeah. you know, anybody can tell me it was a great movie. And if, if I, I'm not satisfied, I don't believe them. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we have to be satisfied with what we are doing, you know, not somebody else, you know, even if it's, you know, 8 billion people. Uh, so I, I was writing the story about this incredible uh, general uh, who is really famous in our country. And I decided to not to do it about, uh, you know, the times when he was already famous and who was fighting, you know, uh, thousands of people, but he was 60 years old. So he already knew what he wants to do. And that's why I chose this period like 18 years earlier when he was a paid mercenary and uh, he was... He, that was the time when he was changing to something else. So I could show his art, you know, when he st starts as, you know, somebody who kills for money to somebody who fights for something, for high reasons, for something what he believes in. And that was super interesting for me uh, to also show the, the period of time, you know, how medieval times were, you know, to show it as realistically as possible. Yeah. And that was my goal. Yeah, and, and what a wonderful cat. I mean, I feel like Ben Foster, like everybody knows him. I almost still feel like he's underrated. Like his performance in 310 to Yuma, his performance in Hell or High Water in Medieval. Like, how is this actor not more white? Like, he, everyone knows him, but like, I feel like he should be even more popular. He's terrific in this, he's terrific in everything he puts his hands on. I mean, and, and, and the cast goes on and on. You know, I mean, Michael Caine, and I mean, just one big name after another. Um, what did you, you know, do you think he's a little bit underappreciated, Peter? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. I think so. It's uh, he is this kind of actor who is good in everything, and he usually does supporting roles. So this one was one of a few where he was a you know yeah. leading man, mm. and it was the only one when he was a leading man uh, who is you know also. Uh, a fight uh, who is fighting you know and this was this is difficult you know it was difficult uh training for him and you know uh, medieval times fighting with sword and a mace you have to learn how to fight yeah and it was very tough for him and i i knew that he's gonna be great in it because he is uh, devoted to what he does and we've been going through every detail and I knew that, you know, uh, when he is not doing anything, he's still interesting because you see what is going on inside of him. And that's why I chose him for, for this character to play Jan Zizka, uh, because I thought, uh, I pictured him like that. The, I, immediately when I, when I uh, saw 
him in person, I, I knew this is him. You know, this is like for sure it's Jan Zizka. So I was mm. super happy when he said yes. And uh, afterwards, actually, Michael Caine said yes. And then everybody wanted to be in a movie with Michael Caine. And also yeah. with Ben Foster, you know, so it was yeah. a great combination. And, and and I would be remiss if I had mentioned Till. Till he is awesome. Like he everything. I mean, he and Glorious Bastards was his. I mean, this too. Um, it, when you so you mentioned Michael Caine, is there anything as a director you could tell him that he hasn't heard before? I mean, a two time Academy Award winner. Like, wh how do you approach that as a director? That's pr I mean, I don't think that's uh, yeah. a lot of pressure. That that was super difficult for me to think about it because I was like, oh my god, how can I direct <laughs> Michael Caine? What, what should I tell him? Well, just do it, whatever. So then I said, hey, Michael, what do you think? And, you know, he said, like, Peter, I'm going to do whatever you want. I said, like, or like whatever. I said, I say, yeah, sure, just tell me what you want. And we started to discuss it. And when he always did what whatever I wanted. And then after the shot, he said, uh, do you want me to change something or is it good? And I said, maybe you could change this. And he changed it. It was unbelievable and in incredible. And he was so professional. He never, he never asked questions. You know, he always felt like I explained him everything so well that he didn't need any extra uh, questions. So it, it felt really good. And we became friends and, uh, I did another. I produced another movie with him, bestsellers right after the medieval. So uh, and he's he's also uh, he has three D character in our video game, which is you know connected with medieval and nice. where you you will be able to play uh, the story of the movie and you would find out more about the motivations of the characters and we're gonna recut the movie. So you're going to enjoy it differently and we're going to be using not use scenes and it's going to be first POV of Jan Zizka. So, and, and Michael helped me so much. And as well uh, as, you know, uh, the others, and for example, Till Schweiger, he's so fun, you know, it's just like he, he's, he's a great man. And we also became friends and, and uh, we speak together, like, you know, very often. And it's, it's like, you know, it's... So, something what i felt through the whole shooting that these guys were really supporting me and the shooting was definitely extremely tough and uh i was exhausted and it, it was like you know some something was not not going right because we couldn't afford that you know we had to change this because of the weather of course like normal stuff but it was very difficult and and uh, the atmosphere and all of them supporting me it really helped me and it was great experience to work with these huge actors and seeing them on set and doing what I wanted them to do. It was incredible. Uh, Peter, what, what was the $20 million, $20 million budget for this movie? Do I have that right? Yes. It was shot in the Czech Republic and it, it had $20 million budget. Uh, we never used same locations, so, which was pretty crazy yeah. because... That's why it looks bigger because, uh, you know, we were going from one location to another and we had over 600 VFX shots and uh, we were showing, uh, like, we were using all the beautiful castles, uh, forests, Prague, Charles Bridge, uh, and everything what we had here to increase the production value of the movie. And that's why I shot it here. And of course, because it's, it's a Czech story, and I, I couldn't shoot it for this money anywhere else because, uh, you know, to make it th look this, you know, big. And uh, that was the plan. Yeah, and, and it does it, it, it sounds a lot like people who don't know much about movies, but $20 million is not a lot to shoot a movie, especially when you, and, and you made, you made every dollar count. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, thank you. It, yeah. it was like, yeah, for the, for medieval movie like this, you need much more money uh to accomplish what you want because you cannot just turn to left and and shoot you just have to find medieval uh buildings or like uh, create them build them uh so it's much more difficult that than to do anything from these days so you have to really have some you know uh, good budget for that uh does does the 20 million this is a maybe a a, a very uh, 
elementary question, but does that include the actor's salaries in the budget? Does does that include whatever the actors make? Is that included in the twenty million? Yeah, that's gross. Wow. You know, it's everything. So normally you've got like four times more for these kind of movies. So oh, it's, it's easy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, I have to say a couple more questions. Thank you for all this time. Um, I love the the scene uh, after the exchange where you look. They look like they're cornered and can't get out. That was so creative, so well done. I mean, I've never seen anything like that in a movie like this. Like, I thought, I thought, oh, oh here's come, here comes something I've seen before. I've never seen anything like this. Okay, the, the, this is like this scene was difficult to shoot because uh, I wanted to use real tactics he was using, yeah. and that's the wagon uh, plus some other stuff, and I. When I saw the rehearsals uh, between the, the actors and stuntmen, I, I knew that we we gonna need more time to practice it, you know, and make it look great. But I was like also thinking maybe we can add one more tactic of him, you know, and use the smoke and hide it some performances or something in the smoke and use just the best ones, you know, and suddenly you see it and you don't see it and it. It would be beautiful. So uh, I did it, and I think it was really worth it, and it it made the scene, you know, uh, more exciting, you know, and and uh, like uh, looking like it's looking now. Yeah, and, and shout out Peter to your cinematographer Jesper and Philip Kleins who did the music. Uh, they did a plus work for you. Yeah, absolutely. They and they were like, uh, for example, Philip Klein. He told me uh, that we. It's going to take some time to find the love themes for the movie and that he's going to send me some something in the beginning. There was after our first uh, meeting and, you know, when we spoke about it, uh, he, he sent me three th uh, cues and basically all of them are the main cues from the, for the movie. And I am using all of them, yeah. which, is, which is, says a lot about him, whatever he sent was so beautiful that you know i couldn't use everything but uh, it helped it a lot because you know there were some scenes which i needed you know to make work better and the music uh, helped me so much yeah and matthew good is phenomenal i mean i feel like i keep going on about your cast like i'm thinking about this uh my last thing to you is how much flexibility do you allow your actors with scripts right because some directors are like listen word for word that's it do you allow actors, especially with the cast you have here, to um, improvise or, or use language maybe not in the script? Because I know you you went you wrote this, and it was not an easy task for you because you kept rewriting and you know you kept pushing yourself and pushing yourself and pushing yourself. So were you strict when it came to the dialogue, or were you a little flexible? Uh, I I'm usually a little flexible. But it still has to be exactly what is written, uh, like the meaning of it. Yeah. And sometimes you change just little word, and it has slightly different meaning. And I, it, then I, I say no, you cannot change it because this is like something. But sometimes we have, uh, you know, uh, we had some readings before the shooting. And there we were discussing what, yeah. what what could be changed. And if somebody says, I would rather say it this way, and it has the meaning, I say, okay, if I feel that it should be said differently, I insist on, you know, doing it as, as written. But during the shooting, I, um, I try to not experiment on this level because then it, you can get into problems later on when you find out in editing, oh my God, I would really need this to be said exactly like that because when i was on the set i forgot that this is you know like you know uh, there because you know it's it comes after this scene and it needs to be there so uh but what i do sometimes i uh you know let them act a little bit longer after the end of the you know like scene and mm -hmm. i i let them do something just walk away or stay and say something or turn or do some little stuff and uh, sometimes i use it because it's you know if the actors uh, you know, because these actors are great so uh, they feel the character and they behave like the character so they 
Matthew Good doesn't behave like Matthew Good. It's it's just like the character right. Sigismund. So uh, you get some interesting stuff usually. Yeah, and, and lastly, you're a producer as well. So, just in general, Peter, can can a producer tell a director what to do, or or once they hire a director, is it just all on the director? Because I always wonder how much push or or, or power producers have, right? Because they are so many times they're financing their this is th this is their project too. How much voice do they have when it comes to a director, or is it you know I've hired Peter to direct my film, it's his film, I'm backing away. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, here I always discuss this uh, as a director with producer because it's just like yeah. it, it's inside of me this fight. Like, do I really need this crane or can I put the camera on that hill? How, what, what is going, you, like, is it enough? Can I use the money somewhere else? So that's difficult for me. But on the other side, it's easier than to discuss it with another person. So uh, when I produce uh, movies, and uh, right now I've, I've got like 10 movies produced in the U.S., and uh, I always learned that it's good to give, you know, uh, like let director do what he has in mind, and sometimes just tell him, but you cannot have this because... We don't have it in budget. Right. If we have right. it in budget, you can have it. But then, if you ask for more later on, I will tell you we don't have budget for that anymore. So you have to decide, do you really want it now or do you need it later? So I leave it on, on, on them. But sometimes, if it's necessary, for example, for a trailer and it's, it's some money shot, we need it for the, you know, just like for the movie. So he cannot cannot tell me, uh, I, I don't want to do this. Uh, I want to spend money on something else, which is not that important for the business, you know, model of the movie. So sometimes it has to just like, you know, uh, he has to understand that it's also it also has to be business for investors. And if the investors are not happy, they're not going to give us money for our next movie. Right. And, okay. you know, so that's, there are decisions like this. Uh, Medieval drops digitally on October 25th. It drops on DVD December 6th. Uh, Peter, what's, what's around the corner for you? Anything you wanted to throw out there? You, you mentioned some future projects. What's, what's, what's around the corner that you want to just throw out there? Uh, so right now I'm, I'm finishing a movie with Morgan Freeman, 57 seconds. Another with uh, De Niro and Malkovich, uh, Savit Salvation. And uh, we are, you know, finishing another three plus, you know, preparing another five. So it's, it's I'm really busy, you know, may, uh, by the way, right now we are shooting with Russell Crowe and Liam Hemsworth in Australia. And uh, so I'm, I'm busy with this. And I decided uh, not to direct for some time because it's been very, you know, just like time mm. consuming. And I've got two daughters, uh, 11 and 14. I want to spend time with them. Mm. And right now, because medieval is out, and I, I, you know, I put everything what I what I had in mind about this, you know, just like what I wanted to say in it, and uh, I, I think because what is happening around us with the war and other stuff, uh, it's surprising for me, and uh, even more, I feel the message uh, of medieval about fighting for something, you know. Uh, you know, justice, for freedom, and keep that faith, like, in ourselves. And if you don't like something, don't just, like, uh, look at it. Do something about it. Yeah. So I feel like this is this is very important for me and also to remind Czech people uh, about their, like, that we've got great history and we should be proud of that. Mm, great movie and great work, Peter. I, I absolutely loved it, and I think people will love it once they see it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to Derek Thomas and Monday Morning Critic Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, you can also connect with Monday Morning Critic on Instagram and Facebook, MDM Critic on Twitter, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found. All episodes available, www.mmcpodcast.com.